Hello everybody, this is Havoc. Welcome to another Total War Warhammer video. Uh, this one is focusing on Azeg's Ard Armor quest battle. It's a quest battle that CA released yesterday. Um, it's going to focus on obviously the quest battle on which Azeg gets his Ard Armor. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, let you watch the intro uh, general speech. So uh, once that pops up, I'm going to be quiet and you can watch it. Those stupid, flouncy humies think they can traps all over our sacred ground. That burial man is Mork's property, not some fishy smelling lake eggs. Roman Ed, stop whispering at me! I know! Come on, Ed. We're gonna stab these dicks and send them running back to their pretty towers. I've had my visits from Mork himself. He reckons we do this, he's gonna sort my armor out real good. But I won't have to knock you all about. What's that? Yes! We'll go south afterwards! Let's go kill some knights! Alright, so after that epic speech, he needs to get this armor, uh, this armor piece in order to finish up his armor. This is an early um, battle in the campaign I guess because uh, you have low tiered units you don't have the big heavy monsters and whatnot and they are playing on hard difficulty with this battle um, first thing to note off is as the, as the greenskins you can play defensive they are all about war but um, Darren plays or yeah I think it's Darren who is playing this um, he is playing completely defensive he's played it a few times and uh, he realized that defensive is the way to go because he's playing against three Bretonian armies. Uh, one thing I do want to notice is way back there in the back you see uh, that little goblin face and actually uh, and then you got this big boiling pot over here on the left side uh, right below the little faction flag um, and here in a minute uh, you will notice more about the landscape I'll get to that. I do think it's cool that they have this little green stuff um, just coming out of their skin really to kind of show off that effect that yeah they reek they're kind of disgusting so he's got goblin archers and um, air boys let's see if he shows the the goblin archers are obviously a little uh, a little weaker whereas the arrow boys are a little bit stronger and as they said they can hold their own kind of if they were to get into a melee engagement and now he's got those orc boar boys it's their version of cab they're slow but they're powerful and you'll actually get to see a charge between them and the bretonian uh... cab here later in the video and so he's got orc biggins those are kind of his um, heavy melee i guess you could say his uh... sword infantry in which they would hold much better uh, than his regular infantry. They're kind of the heavier, heavier tiered units. And then he's got a unit of essentially missile cavalry, goblin, wolf rider archers, uh, which he will use a lot. I think it's cool that they actually have missile cav. And then of course you got Azag on his Wern, which is pretty epic looking. So yeah, the battle is about to start. He's just going over tactical overviews, basically. Um, and one thing that I do want to mention uh, that he set um, earlier, I forgot to, I can't believe I forgot it, uh, guard mode. This was a mode in Medieval 2 in which uh, you would engage. Uh, you'd set guard mode in which they would engage their soldiers, and once out of engagement, if they want it, they would stay put. This allows you to hold the line, and is an aspect that I'm glad that they are bringing back. Okay, here it is. That big mound in the background, you see it looks kind of like tusks. It's just really cool to see that the Greenskins and just Total War have really integrated into the landscape. We haven't seen anything like that really in Total War. And there's Fela Fey, that's the uh, Bretonian's wizardess. Or whatever you want to call her, witch, wizardess. I wouldn't call her a witch because I don't think that's what she is. She's a spellcaster. So the two armies... There's three armies in Bretonia. Two of them are kind of flanking and cav. Uh, this is where we'll get to see a nice, awesome uh, charge between them and the um, boar boys. I'm really excited to see this because it really shows just the fine tuning of the animations between the cav units, and you'll see that in just a second. So again, he's going to have to go. He's going defensive. 
and you're going to see the first volley of arrows in which there are arrow trails just as there are in all the um, in at least Attila and I believe Rome too. But one thing I did notice is that it's a little more um, I wouldn't say realistic. They look a little like the arrow trails look a lot thicker than they did in Attila. Um, in which case, you know, obviously it's a little more fantasy setting. Um, and then he just used <clears throat> um, I can't remember what it's called. He used a spell, he cast a spell, which basically hurt the units. Spells will not be so overpowered that they'll kill an entire unit, uh, but they do each have their own specific thing that they are supposed to accomplish. So like that one really hurt uh, the health and the morale of the enemy unit, and uh, as you can see he's getting engaged there against mounted Yeoman um, Cav. And then over here is where um, I think we get to see that charge pretty soon. If we, if did I miss it? I can't remember. I don't think I did. But so yeah, you see he's playing super defensive. He's able to hold the line, and that's also just allowing him to be um, more steady. It's nice to see that even as I figured as the greenskins, you would have a lack of organization, but I guess not. I guess it's just like any other total war faction um, in which you can obviously hold the line if you want to. So over here he's getting outflanked by Cav so he's gonna whip out another spell. Let's see he does it in just a second because those uh, boar boys can't handle it so he's gonna get the fate of Buna. It's gonna come over here and that's actually gonna reduce the effectiveness of the unit allowing a much inferior unit to attack and therefore be able to win. That's a cool feature they're just showing off all the different kind of spells um, that they can use because that's really um, like they said they wanted to figure out how to use spells but not make them so overpowered that they'll take out a whole unit because that's no fun and that's what a lot of people were concerned with so no issues there no issues there here's that charge I think here it is look at this look at this just that little hop right before the charge and just guys literally being thrown back it's just the animations that they've really worked on for this game will be epic and I'm excited to see the demigriffs and their charges because they will be absolutely unreal <clears throat> now as they keep on uh, they're kinda of, they've focused on the cav and have kind of wrecked them they're pushing them back a lot <clears throat> and so he's gonna you got those orc boys who have kinda been routed essentially and so he used another spell he's got a whole bunch of them over here in this corner and that spell actually boosted the morale it's essentially a rally spell uh, but with a little more effectiveness I think than we've seen in previous Total War games I'm excited to use spells across the board with each of the different factions um, if you have a spell caster of a uh, of a lord or anything like that you're gonna want to keep them more on the defensive side uh, like they're doing here and now the catapults are in range they haven't been in range the whole battle and it's cool to see that they uh, the catapults actually the ammo flips and spins and does all that kind of stuff that's just something that's simple uh, I don't know if it's simple like coding wise but it's something simple that uh, really shows that they're paying attention to detail. So now that they've routed those uh, outlying armies, he's going to move up across the river or across the creek, and uh, he's going to use his flanks to his advantage, and he's going to try and push those catapults, which is obviously a pretty good offensive strategy if you have the ability to do so. And he's also going to take Azag, and he's going to focus on getting him to those catapults to help save his army. And we got a really cool spell coming up that he'll use in just a second. And as you can see, they're still being pursued by a few cab units, but uh, it's nothing too, too concerning. So again, he's going to come up here. He's got his, obviously since it's a flying unit, it's going to be hard for him not to, uh, you know, not to get across the battlefield pretty quick. And now he's going to use one of the bigger spells uh, that he can attack, which is a vortex. Um, one thing we do want to mention is miscasting, I guess, in the tabletop game. When you cast a spell, you roll the dice, 
and depending on the number of the dice, depended on uh, whether it miscasts, which means it can fall back on you. Uh, they said in this game it won't kill you unless you have really, really low health, but it just, it obviously has some very negative effects on your troops and on the person who cast the spell. Um, so you'll have to be careful with that. There's always a chance. I'm assuming there may be even some buffs. See, like right here, she's going to cast, and it's going to backfire on her. It's going to hit her right in the face. So I'm assuming there's going to be some maybe research, maybe some traits in which a spellcaster has an increased chance of success, much like the spies, uh, assassins, and champions did in Total Wartilla in Rome 2. Um, in which case, you'll have a greater chance of success when spellcasting. So as you can see, his front line is starting to kind of deteriorate. Um, those uh, halberdiers are a little rough against his basic infantry units. But he's going to keep pounding on them anyways. And he's going to bring Azag into the battle as well, which will give him a huge buff. He's going to use that same spell that reduces the effectiveness of unit. And he's going to fly in there and just start causing destruction, which I think is absolutely amazing. I love it. I love how they've used uh, the heroes in this game and how well they are going to, to do and how essential they're going to be to your army. So now he's uh, got that flank going on. What I didn't see um, with the archers and ranged units was a arrow count. Uh, maybe they won't have it. Maybe they will. They This is a beta build. So it could be they just haven't put it in there yet. So you can see he's pretty much got this uh, got this in the bag. He's going to start wrapping up. And Fay Le Fay again used one of her wind cast spells which just nicked a unit but you saw the wide area in which that was effective and so that's really good and then here you see humans and orcs their size comparison um, so obviously it's a pretty terrifying aspect um, if you really think about it and especially from what I hear of the chaos warriors they are absolutely ginormous so to see as the humans um, to see how small you are it'd be pretty interesting it'll be pretty fun so that was the end of the battle. Um, as always, you can choose to keep going or you can choose to stay. Um, I'm going to pause it right here just for a second uh, just to show kind of what they've done to the background um, to the end of the to the areas of the map. Obviously, we can't go there, but like you got a big, huge boiling pot over there on the left side. Over on the right is where the burial mound was, so it's been kind of integrated culturally. Um, so it's really good to see that CA is using a lot of integration to really make this fantasy world super, super deep. And just detailed and rich and all that stuff. So again, this was a beta build. Uh, so you can't really expect perfection out of it um, quality-wise. Uh, from what I hear, especially with Total War games, uh, YouTube has a hard time encoding uh, these epic battles just because um, just the graphic demand that it takes it's hard for YouTube to comprehend that I guess um, but again it's a beta build it, you're not gonna you're not gonna get uh, perfect settings the unit cards look really nice and sharp um, the units themselves are a little fuzzy but I'm not concerned about it because we've still got a while before uh, before they'll even come out with it so that will be the end of the part, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, leave any comments, suggestions on my video, on my commentary in the comment section down below. <clears throat> and uh, go out and buy this game. Uh, Pre-order it. It will be amazing. Um, I have already pre-ordered it through Green Man Gaming. I'm an affiliate of theirs. You'll click on the link below. It'll take you uh, to the main page. Uh, I tried figuring out how to get to Warhammer, and it may work, it may not. Um, so either way, click that link, you go shopping, you get 20% off, and the code is in the description as well. And uh, then your purchase will help support my channel. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm still super excited. I'm glad they released this um, in the March, probably in the week, a week and a half. Uh, we will get to see the vampire count, so you bet that I will be on top of that as well. Well, thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. Be on the lookout for Warhammer. I'll see you in April. This is Havoc, and I'm out of here. Peace.